Welcome everybody to our first midweek player profile, but the second one overall. This week, as we mentioned multiple times now, we'll be touching base on John Tavares, captain of the Toronto Maple Leafs this year. For this no, last two seasons, three seasons, yeah. he's got it. Yeah. So, so Johnny Johnny T, as he's famously known uh, out is there, actually, out east, or is it pretty just sure. You? No, it's Johnny T. That's what they uh, that's what they call him out in Toronto. Quite that's sure. what the that's what the uh, the Leafs uh, documentary said. Oh, All okay. or nothing. Okay. Yeah. Well, if the if the documentary says it, then then yeah. sure, why not? So, <laughs> born September twentieth, nineteen ninety. So he's at this moment, he's thirty one. So oh nice God, second half of his career. He's like yeah. a year younger than or a year older than me. That's not saying. Hey. That's crazy. Yeah. He's and uh, look at me. I'm not playing hockey or any hilarious. professional sports. It sucks. <laughs> anyway. Uh, born in Mississauga, Ontario, his childhood team was the Toronto Maple Leafs. So, the fact that he signed his contract with a no trade clause makes sense, and he's never going to leave. So, <laughs> Toronto, Which you have him forever. May, yeah, I was that maybe unfortunate for Toronto, yeah. but not for John Tavares. In 2019, he signed a a big contract, seven year contract for 11 million a year with the Toronto Maple Leafs. And I believe, sorry, yes, 2018. Yeah. And then the very next season, he uh, he became their captain. Which is like in the coolest way imaginable. Did you see the video of how he became the captain? How he found out? His his wife and his newborn son, I think, were in the room with the upper Leafs management. And then Babcock at the time was a coach, brings him in to the room, and then the kid has a C on his on his chest <laughs> with the Toronto Tavares jersey with yeah. the C, and that's how he finds out he's a captain. Oh, that's pretty fun. That's so cool. That's dude. a fun that's way so, to find one of the out. only classy things Babcock's done in his career. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, John John Tavares was uh, drafted, I believe, in 20, 2008? Nine. 2009. 2009. First overall by the New York Islanders. Um, he served as their captain for, for quite a bit as well. And I, th- I genuinely, when we were discussing who to talk about, I thought he was a perfect person to talk about. He's the biggest the biggest team in the NHL. He's a captain of the biggest team in the NHL right now. Just in sp- fan yeah, slash yeah. income perspective they're and the most valuable the, uh, team in I the guess. nhl yeah <laughs> so he, he's the captain of the biggest team in the in the entire league so i figured it was an awesome time to talk about him so he well what, what else what can you tell us about him in uh, his uh yeah well, in his career, John's career, i guess oh well, he played in in, in multiple all-star games yeah just, yeah that's pretty, huge. pretty nice accomplishment too played in 2012 15 16 17 18 and 19. So perennial all-star. Yeah. Good, good, good player. Good yeah. player, yeah. You made the NHL all-rookie team in 2010, so also pretty good. He's almost, like, in his career, he's almost a point per game. He's played 879 so far, and he has 826 points. Yeah. Which is still really good. Like, yeah, once, once very you make, solid. Once you make 1,000 points, that's... that's Very few very, players yeah, get there. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, he's been in the in the league since 2009, 2010. Yep. Um, he's had, I don't think he's had a single season, he's had two seasons where he was above a point per game player. 2017 and 18 with the Islanders, he got 84 points in 82 games. And then 2018, 19 with the Maple Leafs the very next season, he got 88 points in 82 games. And he also got 86 points in 82 games. Mm, oh yeah, you're right. 2014, 15. 15. I yeah. missed that. You're good call. So three games where he was above a point per game. Three years. I don't. Three years. I don't think he uh, ends his career as a more than one point per game player, just the way he's going right now. But as of this moment, I think he's a very good number two defender. Oh, but center. he's still pretty good. Yeah, exactly. Good second, uh, second line center. I mean, yeah. to get hit 11 million to be the second line center, that's a little that's, different. Yeah. But he's playing for his childhood team. He's ecstatic over that, and I mean, I'm happy for him. Right. So. Did you see that he was the uh, the face of the, of the Team Canada apparel commercial for the Olympics? Like this for this last this? Olymp- for this upcoming Olympics. Really, Team Canada released a uh, a commercial like advertising their new like Olympic gear, and Tavares yeah. was the only hockey player on there. He's a pretty good looking guy, so. I mean, I don't think that's why they would put him there, though. I think <laughs> he's like the face of like of the of the Leafs, the biggest team in in technically the world. But I would have definitely put McDavid in. Yeah, I don't even think Tavares makes the Team Canada think, roster now. With how, how stacked Canada, yeah, like all the Canadian players are, like, yeah, I don't, I don't think so either. So, Johnny, Johnny, he'd be close. He'd be was close. Uh, 
Played for the Milton Ice Hawks in the OPJHL in 2004 and 5. 05 and 6, he got drafted into the uh, Oshawa Generals program. Played there for, you know, he had 134 points in 67 games in his, first, uh, in his second season, which is huge. Was never a below one point per game player in uh, junior. Mm-hmm. And then in his last season, he got traded to the London Knights in 2008-9. So, not bad. I mean, he's played in between New York and Toronto his whole career. He was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine seasons in New York. And then he signs that big deal. I think he's going to retire as a Maple Leaf for sure. Uh, he actually played for one other team. During the lockout, shortened 2012-2013 season. Uh, he decided to go out and play for Bern in the Swiss League, where he got 42 points in 28 games. Dang. So he kept his uh, hockey alive, and he just went over there for a bit and came back here and, and as, as if it was nothing, hockey. 47 yeah. points in 48 games that short yeah. season. So he is uh, he, he's a tremendous player, man. He's a great leader as well. The fact that he's playing in his childhood team, as we mentioned multiple times now, is, is very exciting for him. I'm, I'm very I'm happy f- for him. And, yeah, perennial. he's been a perennial all-star for so long, and he's a great piece in that team. He's not obviously never won a Stanley Cup. Do you think he wins a cup? I want to say no because it's Toronto, but I can, I can see he might win. If It's kind of hard because with the I'm, way the cap... The structure is in Toronto right now with now with Morgan Riley signing his new deal. Yeah. It's going to be like five players worth or that is like taking up like more than 50% of your cap space. Kind of hard to build a team around just those five players if you don't have the money. Yeah. But I would say in his last few years, if he does want to win a cup, he might if he really, really, really wants to win a cup, he might go somewhere else and then maybe go back. I'm saying I heart I want him to win. But I'm saying no. Yeah. You have five players taking up 55% of your cap. Yeah. No, that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. But anyway, he's, um, and he's, starting to, he's starting to heat up a little bit now. He's starting to heat mm-hmm. up. He just had a yep. three-point game against uh, Detroit, so he's starting to hit the team starting to come around a little bit. Thankfully for all of Toronto media, but honestly, <laughs> I don't see a better purse, a better fit to be the captain of that team than John Tavares. And I think part of the reason I wanted to talk about him in the player profile as well. So we know that he, he played with the Oshawa Generals, London Knights, and the Ontario Hockey League. Like he's an Ontario-born and raised kid, Mississauga. He has a house out there as well, if I'm not mistaken. Like that's where his off-season home is too. He's got, I believe, now two kids, a wife and two kids. So he's he's living like he's living his best life, man. He's he's a happy dude. But the biggest thing I want to talk about too was his injury last playoffs. And how he came back from that. Because that was mm-hmm. a big mm-hmm. injury. For those of you who don't know, he, it was it was a oh man, it was such a tough play. It was game one against the Canadians, like they opened up the playoffs. And Tavares, for whatever reason, just trips on something and falls. And as he's going down, Perry is like turning the corner to go skate up ice, but doesn't see him at all, and he tries to jump over him, knee straight to oh, the face, and it was gruesome. one of the most yeah. gruesome things I've seen in my life, dude. It was a horrific injury, and the fact he's come back and, and yeah, playing just well. started playing well again, uh, it's really nice to see. All right, what, well, what else can we talk about Tavares? Do you think he's a Hall of Famer? Uh... I want to say yes, but you know how, like, it's, like, really weird how to get into, like, the Hall of Fame and everything. Like, it's basically, like, if you won a lot of awards, if you won some Stanley Cups, then you're basically in. Mm -hmm. I want to say yes because he's very good, but I don't think he will. He's going to be one of those players that is a really, really good player, but he won't make make it into the Hall of Fame. Yeah, and and John... Tavares said, uh, "Like he, I don't think he's ever won an award. Did he win the Calder in his first year? I don't think he did. I don't eh? think so. No. No. Uh, he, he hasn't won necessarily any awards or any individual awards or team awards by any means. And then, so, I, would, I, I don't think he's a Hall of Fame player. I think he's an exceptional player and has played for a long... I, I just don't... I just... There's a lot 
other some more players that are as good. I don't. I think he's an all star. I don't think he's a superstar. Even in his prime, I don't think he necessarily was a superstar kind of player. But to be taken first overall, that's a big deal, man. Like you, you got to be able to. Yeah, taking first overall and just start getting into the league immediately, that's pretty good. And he's he's a sound defensive player as well. And for that, like maybe he gets in that way. But I just think each year it will be, it will be tough for him to get in each year. Yeah. Because uh, like you think of his class, the 09 class. There's like people that have played before him that retired that can still get in every year. And we'll we'll see we'll see how he. How he continues off his career, I think it's still a little bit too early to, to figure it out. I mean, for all we know, he can be continuing with his production until he's 36 or 7. And then that would probably change both of our minds, honestly. But So when he is done his contract, I believe he has four to five years left. So that will put him anywhere between 35 to 36. Do you think he retires or do he, does he sign another contract? Like I said, if he wants to win, like I don't think he's gonna win a, a cup with Toronto. Mm-hmm. So if he doesn't want to win a Stanley Cup to like to like solidify his career, I would say just sign some sh- very short contracts just to see if he can yeah. win with a go to a team that can win. I think he has a style of play, and he's always working on improving his game. I think he has a style of play that he can play into. Is like thirty eighth. Yeah, I can see that. Like yeah. a jumbo Joe kind of thing. Because he's like sound defensively, and he's never had the elite foot speed, if I'm not mistaken. He's just a high IQ kind of player, that, and that's how he gets all of his, uh, that's how he gets his points and everything, right? And that's mm-hmm. how he gets his his recognition. So, yeah, I would agree I would, I would agree with that for sure. And, um, and honestly, like looking at like what better person to really lead the Toronto Maple Leafs right now, and like the way he handles the media, the way he takes he takes the blame for his team often. He calls out officiating when obviously we need to because the officiating in the NHL is an absolute joke. And oh yeah, it right? is. <laughs> so yeah, I think John Tavares is. Uh, do you think he makes another All Star game? The way they're they're kind of doing the All Star game now. I don't think he will. No, no. I, I don't. He's not. He's the third best player, fourth best player on that team. Honestly, I think. Yeah. Still a good player, but is he a number one center on any team in the NHL not named Arizona Coyotes? <laughs> um, right now. Yeah. Yes. Who? Yeah, I can see. Um, I can think I can of see. like two right now. Three. Because um, I'm. Like one, Vegas. I'm thinking, yeah, Vegas is one right now because yeah. of injuries. Seattle. Um, definitely Seattle. I was thinking maybe Anaheim. Could be, yeah. I'm thinking um, he's probably Calgary's number one center, too. Mm. I think he's better than Monaghan, dude. Is he better than Lindholm, though? I guess Lindholm is playing center right now, isn't he? Yeah. I don't think he's better than Lindholm. No. No. Yeah, I There's mean, a he'd few. be, he'd There's be a few. He'd probably be Buffalo's number one center. Probably be, you know, he's not. I put Suzuki over Tavares right now. Which is a pure offensive standpoint. Yeah, I put Suzuki over. Yeah. Columbus is number one center. Yep, because they have good wingers. But Nashville's number one center. Nashville, yep. I can see Nashville. Arizona's um, number one. Well, center. obviously Arizona, but we we just said that. <laughs> right. Besides Arizona. And that's about it. So I think he's like, I, I think he would be in the top, definitely the top 50 centers in the league, top 30, quite possibly. Because there's some teams that he's not even the best center on his team. So that makes it a little tough that way, right? But yeah. I still think he's a great player. I don't think he'll go, get imagining. into another all star game. Yeah, I'm just imagining if he does like take like less money, like the next contract and everything. And just seeing him and I'm just imagining him in in oiler colors. See, that though, that if he takes a lesser money in another contract, it'll be a cup contender for yeah. sure, and he'd be the fourth line center. He wouldn't be a Oh like at okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, for like the next contract, at 38, right? yeah. Or yeah. whatever. Yeah, no, that's true. That's like true. right now he is right, I was thinking a top like right center now. <laughs> for at least six or seven other teams. Yeah, I'm just, for I'm sure. just I was just thinking right now, yeah. like if he did if his contract was up and he just went somewhere else. I, yeah, I like, would take him on any team in this league. 
No, but I was thinking like McDavid and Dreisaitl and then Tavares and Nuge. Yeah, I could do that. Okay. <laughs> right, yeah. He, he would be at... Right now, he is at worst second line center on every team with one exception, that being uh, two exceptions, Pittsburgh and Edmonton. Yeah. Right? Uh, he would be the third center in that in those groups. But everywhere else, the absolute worst, it's he would second. be their second line yeah. center. And he would be, as we discussed, a first line center on about six or seven teams in the league. So he's still a really good player. I mean, I know we, we these player profiles, we're going to really diverging into just their career so far and how we think they're going to do. And, I mean, you guys know all the information. I was born and raised in Mississauga, Ontario, a Toronto kid. Face of the franchise he first cheered overall up for. pick in 09 with first New York. overall pick in, in, in 09 with the Islanders and he was a face of that franchise for a long time. Yes. Do you think the the hatred he gets from the Islanders is justified? The Islanders fans, I and mean, he ditched them. That's the way they're looking at it. Yeah, he really just ditched them and like gave up. Didn't on he them say like some like that? Didn't he have like a thing that he was like gonna like stay or whatever? And then they just I ditched. think they talked about yeah. that. Yeah, but that whole season was tough, man. They, he he didn't sign a contract extension, obviously, and they didn't get traded at the deadline. He got traded in immediately, like at the end of the he signed yeah, at the end of the signed. season, yeah. right? He he signed that contract as a free agent, and that he was the biggest free agent of that class for sure. And at the moment of signing, yeah, people thought it was a big contract for him, but the, they thought he'd live up to it. Yeah, that is true. So I, I I don't do you see like what does he need to do to live up to that contract? I don't know. It's it's tough. He like needs to he be said, the leading like scorer said, of that team. Yeah, like you said, like he's basically third or fourth best on the team, and he's making way more than he should. If he ever wins a cup with Toronto, it makes the contract worth it. Sure. No question. Sure, yeah. I don't think it's happening. No. <laughs> and his is a really tough contract to get rid of for that team, so they're going to have to build around him. And he he's just a smart player that I think does bring out best in his line mates. Uh, but he does need a good, at least one good winger to be with him in order to do that, right? But he's it's... not the, he's not a, Mc, he's not a Crosby, he's not a McDavid, he's not somebody who can play with nobody and still get points. McDavid played with freaking um, Milan Lucic on his one wing and then uh, Benoit Puglia on his other, and he still put up over a point per game. Like that's not happening with Tavares. No, but Tavares is still a heck of a player. Oh yeah, no, very definitely talented, good player. Yeah, but. Yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be tough to live up to that contract. For sure, and the but, no movement, too. It's, but he's, that's why he got it. He got the no movement so that he can stay in his hometown team. Like, then just and he wants the stability to be there with his friends, yeah. his family. and It just completely screws up, just screws up the team. Whatever. That's their own fault, really. <laughs> but he's I'm a not great leader. <laughs> he's, he's a great leader, a great presence oh, yeah. no, in that definitely. locker room, yeah. from my understanding as well. And just watching that all or nothing on the TV, on, on Amazon Prime, as I was telling you about, like, it, you can tell he's a he's a tremendous, tremendous person as well. So, yeah, that, I think that right, pretty much wraps it up for our first ever midweek player profile. Let us know in the comments below what you thought and how we can improve. Because this is probably one area that we can really use uh, feedback on and what you guys want to see in the future. And tell us who you want us to talk about too. Yeah, tell us who you want to talk who you want us to talk about in uh, in different leagues maybe as well. So different sports. Different sport, yeah. Just, just anything. Yeah. Let us we would love your feedback on this. Let us know. This one was like uh you know, just random stuff we thought of, but you know, if we can get feedback from you guys that'd be absolutely fantastic. And hopefully you enjoy the video this week and thank you very much for tuning in. Don't forget in. to like and subscribe. Like and subscribe, yes. Follow us on Twitter as Follow well. Us on Twitter, yes. And um yeah, so this upcoming we have the podcast episode coming out uh, in a few days here now and we'll be talking a lot about uh again the, the major sports and then the ATP tour is having a uh one of their Masters events happening this week in Paris. So just tune in uh, for our podcast episode this week where we'll talk about, you know, the, the, the four main sports, the five main sports we talk about, and then probably a little bit of tennis as well. So thank you, everybody, and we'll see you later on this week.